Hello reformers and welcome back to Prophecy of Pendor. Now when we left off we captured Laria and it became ours. Yeah, King Ulrich was really, really generous with that. I was very surprised. I actually thought that we'd have to, you know, <laughs> we'd have to leave. But uh, yeah, anyway, because I have completed over 10 Noldor tournaments, I went into Elecrae and I spoke to, I believe, I believe his name is Sadren. Sadren or something like that, and he gave me Mystical Rune Plate, because uh, someone actually reminded me about this in the comments on one of the previous episodes, and I thought to myself, oh yes, I did plan to go and get some Rune Plate, because initially I thought to myself, no, I'm not going to get a Rune Weapon or anything like that, but then I succumbed to the allure of the Ruby Rune Bow, because it is just so, so powerful, and I thought, yes, we must go for that, but... I completely forgot about the rune plate, so thank you very much for uh, giving me that reminder. And I went and I got this from Sadren, from uh, from Elecrae. He gave it to me completely for free because obviously I have completed about 14 Nordor tournaments and uh, I, I've won them, obviously. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use one or maybe even two Qualys gems on upgrading the mystical rune plate now according to the wiki it says you need wine and one qualis gem to be able to upgrade the mystical rune plate i don't know whether this is correct it might just be that we need two qualis gems instead of just one but we'll see all right so we're inside the hidden mines right here and uh hmm. now here's the thing there are quite a few choices here's some wine for you there we go yes that hits the spot uh Okay, you again, do you have anything else? I might take a look at my inventory. Okay, fantastic, there we go. So he is actually going to do that now. I was a bit worried, to be honest. I thought to myself, oh, is he going to take two Qualys gems? No, no, thankfully not. Anyway, as you can see, we have three choices here. And uh, I've looked at the wiki. I might actually include a bunch of things on the screen right now so you can actually see the stats of each one. But what we are primarily looking at here is the strength requirement and also the weight of each piece of plate and you can see by the little uh, little pictures on the screen right now you can see that sapphire is generally the lightest and the easiest to wear i believe it has like a uh, this is off the top of my head by the way i think 12 or 13 strength requirement or something like that it's pretty low so that's for people that are not going to spec that much i suppose into strength then you have the emerald, which is kind of like the middle ground, which has a little bit more protection, a little bit heavier, and obviously the strength requirement is also higher. And then you have the ruby, which is, by all accounts, the best armor in the game. Of all of Pendor, it is the best armor. So that is obviously something that I'd love to go for, but it is very heavy, and the strength requirement is 35. So it's definitely something that I will never be able to wear in this particular series because I basically barely made it to 25 strength. So that's it. That's what we're going to be doing. I'm going to be going for the emerald. There we go. Ooh, ah, I'm so excited to see what we look like with it on because... Yeah, I'm going to actually compare the two pieces of armor with each other. The one that I currently have on and the new emerald armor. But I'm going to travel back to Salian territory first. This is actually a pretty interesting development right here. We have a vassal from the Empire. I don't... Why is he... Okay, never mind. I suppose it's not that interesting because I actually thought that this fellow was going to run in here and attack this snake cult army along with... His liege, but uh, that does not appear to be his goal, which is a bit disappointing. Anyway, as I said, we're going to take a look at the at the uh, at the armor here. As you can see, what I'm currently wearing is basically really good top tier armor, but it is nowhere near as good as the armor that we just gained. So as you can see here, we have 63 to body armor and 29 to leg armor. So. If you remember the screenshot of the Emerald Rune Plate Armor, you'll know it has 73 body armor instead of 63, 9 head armor, which mine currently does not have, and it also has 32 to leg armor. So while that is a slightly minor upgrade to leg armor, the body armor is crazy good, and the head armor is also very, very nice. So we are going to be wearing that, and to compare with armor that is also 
very, very good. This is Lordly Noldor Noble Armor. This is something that I gained from one of the tournaments in my off-screen time that I did. It was so many, many days and months, actually, off-screen. But anyway, point is, look at this. 71 to body armor, 34 leg armor, 7 head armor. It is, well, kind of interchangeable, but the weight is a little bit, uh, a little bit more. And the strength requirement is insane. 30 strength. I mean, usually characters, if you're going to be strength focused, if you're going to be specking into any kind of attack stat, so power draw, you know, power strike, something like that, you're most, li most likely going to have 30 strength. I originally planned to have 30 strength, but unfortunately that just didn't happen. Anyway, uh, I've done nothing much else. I basically just went to my castle, get, got another baggage train to help with my morale, and I also accepted a whole bunch of extra nobles into my knighthood order, and I am now running around with 68 biscuits of rich tea, because I thought, wow, let's just go absolutely crazy. All right, so otherwise what we're going to do is I'm actually going to try and help Marius Imperator, if at all possible. Yeah, yes, there we go. Actually, <laughs> you know what? Hmm, I'm actually thinking of something here. I am thinking of an opportunity. This opportunity consists of me allowing Marius Imperator to do his thing against the snake cult to, uh, you know, weaken the snake cult considerably. Oh, wow, the Dread Legion is actually over there as well. Oh, no. This might turn into a bloodbath extremely quickly. But anyway, my main plan here is to have Marius Imperator do a lot of damage to the snake cult army. As you can see, there's only 13 Serpent Priestesses and 19 Anaconda Knights remaining. Otherwise, they just don't have that much to worry about. And uh, I'm going to attempt to do some damage to the snake cult because, as you can see right here, the Snake Cult is currently overwhelming. The Jatu have been destroyed. That's what it says. But, uh, I mean, that's what it needs to be. As you can see here, they need to be obliterated or destroyed with no outstanding minor faction armies. Ah. Yes. So we still need to kill the Jatu armies, but I was hoping that we maybe could avoid that. But no, doesn't seem to be the case. But anyway, I'd like to start working on the Snake Cult and trying to diminish their presence. So what I'm going to do is, oh dear, hello, Maltese, you're so lovely today. <laughs> That's not going to work on her, I know. It's not going to work at all. So we're going to have some problems here. Marius Imperator, you might want to run. Never mind. He's not running and he's getting absolutely slaughtered. Actually, Oh, I thought that I might be able to lure the Dread Legion away from Marius because I was actually seeing a double double opportunity right here. Basically what I wanted to do before the Dread Legion appeared was weaken Marius Imperator and then attack him. Yes, very honorable, isn't it? Uh, yes, attack him and then try and capture him if, if at all possible because we might be able to, you know, do something with him. I think we can get a, uh, well, we can get his unique weapon. I think that would have been kind of nice, because we could have given that to one of our companions, maybe. Or we could have used it ourselves, because I'm actually using this Masterwork Noldor War Sword right now. 47 cutting damage, it's pretty nice. Usually I'm using the Masterwork Singalian Noble Saber, which is nice. But I'm not entirely sure about it, because this seems much better in every way, but it is a two-handed slash one-handed weapon, which I'm not a big fan of, so we'll see how that goes. Anyway, Marius was defeated here, bit of a shame to be honest, and now the Snake Cult army is joining with the Dread Legion and making themselves into a huge nuisance. So now I'm not entirely sure what I'm gonna do. So I guess what we'll do is try to lure the Snake Cult away from the Dread Legion, and then we will just eliminate the Snake Cult army by itself, hopefully. Uh, maybe once it turns to night, we might have a better shot because they will not have as much spotting skill as I do. So it is going to be very easy for me to uh, maybe ambush the snake cult. They are running away from me, though. Oh, no, no. Uh, actually, do, do you think we could win against the... Uh, I don't think we could win against the Dread Legion, to be honest. I really don't. Okay, there we go. We can now win against this snake cult. Easy. Easy, no problem at all here. Now I'm going to die a fool's death. 
<laughs> now that I've said that, I'm going to die a fool's death so incredibly easily. Mark my words. Let's, let's have a look whether that actually does happen. Wouldn't that be just, you know, absolute justice right there? Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, whatever the case, let's put my people into some pretty decent positions. Bear in mind that obviously the snake cult do not have any horse archers, so we are not going to be able to utilize the environment or anything to give ourselves an advantage. However, we can use our horses once again if we feel like that is actually going to give us any kind of advantage. I don't know whether it is, to be honest. I feel like it might be not even worth it. But we'll see how it goes. So let's get my infantry and archers around here. I actually have 13 infantry only. So that's not a lot. And the enemy is coming towards us right here. But bear in mind they only have a very small amount of serpent priestesses and anaconda knights. They only have about 30 of them total together combined. So it's going to be a pretty simple affair of being able to eliminate them. No problem at all. Anyway, so let's have a look. See if our biscuits are able to... Murder them. That is a sentence I never thought I would say. Go, Biscuits. I choose you. Use... Dunk... No. No, that's basketball. <laughs> use use dunking and tea, I was going to say, but that, that, doesn't, that doesn't really work. Oh, well. Whatever the case, let's hope that our archers will be able to do a good job. Let's spread them out a little bit, actually. Seems like our... Our horse archers are doing okay. Let's just tell them to charge in. Tell our infantry to charge in as well. I think we can do a pretty decent job if they charge. But obviously we have to be a bit careful. Or do we? Do we have to be careful? I don't know. This is the massive risk that I'm taking as well by actually telling my units. Well, not telling my units, but by, by taking these uh, more of these units along for the ride. Because you know me... Sometimes I make uh, questionable decisions, often, and, uh, you know, the fact is is that maybe it would have been a better idea for me not to take so many biscuits, because I actually took another 30 or so from my garrison at Seven Cross Keep, because I thought to myself, okay, let's go full power, you know, let's go, let's go beast mode, you know, let's try our very best with as many powerful units as we can get our hands on. Now, speaking of powerful units, I did not take all of my Earls of Grey. I have a pretty significant number in Seven Cross Keep. I think I have about 10,000 of the... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I wish I had 10,000 of those guys, but no. I have about 50 or 40 or 30 or something like that in the garrison there, so it is kind of a finite resource. And that is a bit of a, a bit of an issue with me because sometimes I like to, as I say, take more than adequate risk. And as a result of that, it does sometimes end up with me losing more units than I would have otherwise liked. So, yeah, it's a bit of a double-edged sword, really. On the one hand, we are having an absolutely fantastic time with just stomping these previously predatorial kind of, you know, armies into the ground, into the dust, because that's what we want to do to them, you know, we want to make sure that they know that we are here for vengeance, we are here for revenge, because these guys, they previously wanted to attack us all the time when we were, you know, pretty weak, you know, we weren't, uh, we weren't exactly super strong or anything like that, we didn't have a lot of very good units or anything like that, so now that we have decent unit, and well, this snake cult army was actually wounded by Marius Imperator quite a bit, so I guess I can't actually say that I did that myself, so there's that as well, but anyway, I'll take the snake cult rituals, because that's always good to kind of hand over there, and I'm actually going to give my lordly dark green greaves in here, as well as my sturdy female armor, because who knows, maybe some people are going to want to use it. There you go, they are actually using it, fantastic, Sigismund! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh dear. Sigismund is using the female Nordor armor. Well, uh, if he wants to, I suppose it's not really for his body type. And you're going to be able to see that pretty obviously. 
but uh, I don't even know whether the model supports it, to be honest. So I suppose we're going to find out very soon. All right, so otherwise, what do we have here? Our Empire Mortals. I suppose we could take a couple of those. Heavy Infantry's only got a weekly wage of 13 dinars? That's kind of surprising. Okay, pretty nice for them, I guess. And uh, yeah, I don't really want to take. I I don't want to take any prisoners right now. These are just followers and armsmen anyway, so they are not going to sell for that much. So I'm just going to leave them alone. And we are now going to have a look at. Oh dear, this is bad. Maltese is extremely powerful. Oh dear, oh dear. Right, so Sig oh, Sigismund's actually not lo not even looking bad. He just looks a bit more svelte, you know what I mean? He looks a little bit uh, <laughs> a little bit slimmer, a little bit more slender than he used to be. I think that I think that suits him pretty well actually. I thought he was going to look kind of weird because maybe the model would not allow him to do that and he would have like missing te textures on his on his actual body, but no, it seems like it's fine. Anyway, uh yeah, there's actually am I am I not the marshal right now? I thought I was actually the marshal, but apparently I'm not. I, I think I was made the marshal again, but then after about a week, because I was actually just waiting for some time just to, uh, you know, get my knighthood order upgraded and everything. But uh, yeah, I think they took it away from me after that, so that's a bit of a shame. Oh well, never mind. But yeah, my previous plan was to actually wage war against Marius Imperator, you know, get his unique weapon, take Janos from the Empire, take the castles here, and then create our own little... Uh, section of territory but obviously it really depends are we gonna you know i mean that's the point like are we gonna continue with salian i know a lot of people wanted us to create our own faction but i'm not entirely sure about it because i've never ever in my entire history with mountain blade done a series where i've helped out a faction and uh, helped them to oh well, oh, okay, thanks. <laughs> Thank you, that's very nice indeed. Anyway, I've never once done a series where I've helped a faction to take total control over the entirety of the map. Now, one of you actually had a pretty intriguing suggestion, and that suggestion was, why don't I help Sarlian take over the entirety of the map, and then just to the very end, rebel, and then go up against a massive army of Salian vassals and try and take over the entirety of the map backwards, basically. So we start off with like one or however many fiefs we have at that point and we try and do like a reverse invasion kind of thing. So that might be a pretty cool thing to do, but I don't know. Anyway, the army of the Serpent Cult fell before you as wheat to the scythe and you will henceforth be known as Cult Banisher. With plus one iron flesh wrested from Azi Dahaka herself for your defeat of her villainous snakes. Cool. Cool. I like it. I like it. All right. So we now have, I think, eight iron flesh. Uh, yes, I think we have eight iron flesh. I think I had seven before. So we now have eight. That's pretty good. I like that quite a bit. All right. So, ooh, hello, Mettenheim. Mettenheim Expeditionary Force. Right. Uh, these guys actually have nothing for me, to be honest. I could probably defeat them reasonably quickly and easily but it doesn't seem to really make much sense as you can see here they don't seem to even show up on this so it's not even necessary i was thinking that maybe what we want to do is hunt down igrim the devourer or one of the heretic armies because i think we could probably do a pretty decent job oh what's going on here oh apparently so roland was born near says And the Fiat's Vein have apparently banished all of this particular... What was it? All members of the noble house of Svargion? Svargion? I don't know. They have been found guilty of human sacrifice and consorting with heretics. Well, obviously, that's not very good. All right, so it seems like there aren't any other snake cult... Oh, I should probably take Sez, you know. We are currently at war against the Dashar, so it would be probably a, a pretty good idea to go and take this. So maybe that's what we should do. Anyway, I'm actually going to ask you a question. What do you think we should do? Do you think we should do the reverse invasion kind of uh, kind of idea? Do you think we should stay with Salian? Or do you think we should just create our own faction as soon as possible? You don't have to answer. I'm just, I'm just putting it out there in case you want to uh, voice your opinion. Anyway, 
let's uh, let's create some ladders. Let's create some ladders and see how we do in the says siege. I am looking forward to this quite a bit actually. It's been a while since I've actually done a proper siege. So oh okay okay we're gonna be having some people come out here. And we don't have that many arrows, bear that in mind. So I'm actually going to have to tell everyone just to charge straight on in here. Hopefully my people have good enough shields to survive the initial bombardment. Because bear in mind, the Tashar actually have some good units, you know? They have some really, really good units. And now that they have Sez, they actually have the Knighthood Order of the Shadow Legion available to them, which is not very good at all. At least for me, because as you can see, I'm actually taking some significant damage from them. Significant damage. Ha! Ah. Oh, yes. Significant damage. Oh, well. Anyway, it seems like we're actually fine. But we are losing a couple of biscuits right now, which is not good. They are crumbling in the tea of life. It is not good. Or shall we say the tea of death? It's probably the tea of death, more likely, isn't it? Anyway, let's get all these guys killed, and then maybe we can get over there to the other archers. As you can see, I'm not... Not entirely convinced about this Noldor sword that I'm using right here. It doesn't seem to do that much damage in comparison to this Singalian sword that I was using beforehand. But it does have much better speed, and it also has a two-handed variant. And the two-handed variant is obviously amazing, because it doesn't suffer from the damage reduction from the, you know, two-handed slash one-handed capability of it. So that's kind of a cool thing too. Anyway... 68 renown was our reward for that. Kind of amazing. We just killed 139 enemy units. That's amazing. Right, let's lead our soldiers in an assault and see how we do. This is 57 against us. Let's put everyone in decent enough positions. Frederick is always getting himself killed, mainly because he doesn't have a shield, I don't think. Don't think he has a shield, so that's probably the reason for that. Anyway, I'm going to get out my bow, and we're going to see if I can do some damage here. Bear in mind that the Ruby Rune Bow is not that good from range because its accuracy is a little bit lacking. And uh, I'm kind of surprised by that because it is obviously probably the best bow. I think it might be the best bow in the game. I'm not sure. On damage, I think it certainly is. But I don't know about it on accuracy. I think it's probably like fourth or fifth best in terms of accuracy because it only has 92. I'm sure there are a bunch of archers. Archers? No. A bunch of bows that have about 95 maybe accuracy but I don't know which ones they are off heart of course. Off hand? Ha! Ah, off heart. Yes. Oh well. The mind. Okay so yeah it seems like we're actually doing perfectly fine so far. Yeah. Perfectly fine as you can see. 75. That's just absolutely crazy already being killed. Alright, let's just tell my people to go a little bit closer here. Spread out our archers a little bit more so we can actually get our Earls of Grey firing away a little bit better. Shooting off their arrows into the opponent as best as they can. Uh, seems like I can't even see any other people, but apparently my units can. And they're pinpoint accurate. Very, very deadly from range. Whoa, look, oh my. Do you see all these arrows on the outside? These are all Noldor arrows as well, because I gave them the best quivers available from the Knighthood Order. So, pretty insane. Let's see if I can actually kill this guy. Oh, 165 damage from a headshot. That's crazy. That's really nice. Okay, let's see if we can... Oh, yes, we killed a Seer Initiate as well. Very nice. Okay, so now this is the main reason why I wanted to give my Knighthood Order units Noldor arrows, because we can now take all of these... And they'll basically be Noldor arrows if we need them. You know what I mean? So I think that's pretty amazing. Let's see if I can kill a couple more over from the side there. Bear in mind, I am wearing the... I think it is the second best armor in the game now. So I'm not going to be taking that much damage at all. So it's going to be even easier for Bear Till to prove... Well, shall we say, for me to prove my ineptitude. Because I'm probably going to die even with this armor on, let's face it. And it seems like these guys are wanting to get shot in the gut, and that is very not not very not very not very good for them, is it? No. Ow. Ooh, you could see the blood, see the blood, just coming out of their heads, and their knees, because an arrow to the knee is never good. He was an adventurer, but now now he can't do that anymore. Now he has to become a guard, 
and that's not rewarding, you know? I mean, it's not as rewarding, shall we say, as being an adventurer. Being a guard is still a rewarding job because you're protecting people, you know? You're protecting people. You're not going for the riches of adventuring, but still, I feel like that's a very relevant joke. <laughs> no, <laughs> probably not. Probably not anymore, but it's always nice to make a small reference to it now and again. Anyway, uh, yeah, all my people are actually out of arrows. We've killed 174 so far. Guess I'm going to charge in. Guess I'm going to charge in and we'll see how we do. These guys actually do not have shields for the most part, it seems. So I'm going to just continue to shoot them all over the place. Yes. Yes. Take out that Shadow Legion Centurion as well. And let's get in there. Let's get in there myself. Bear in mind, I have really good shield skills, so I shouldn't take too much damage from getting in here. And I'm actually going to go over here and see if I can just eliminate the last couple of archers. That's usually the job that I like to take on because it does tend to be something that AI tends to forget a little bit. I do like this weapon. When I'm wielding it two-handed, I like it quite a bit. It's really good for when you're on your horse as well because it has such a massive reach. It actually has more reach than my previous sword by about 10 or 5 points. So that's pretty good. And it also has... Well, much faster speed than my other one. My other one had an, uh, a speed rating of 89 or something crazy crazy slow like that. This one has a speed rating of 100 and something, so it's a pretty massive upgrade in that regard. Otherwise, there it is. A victory for us. 57 renown and 31 kills. 31 kills. Now, bear in mind that we did also kill... How many? 100 and... Did we kill 150 or so? So we basically took out 400 units total here, and now we have to deal with the defenders in the streets as well. So let's see if we can do that. Gonna have to be a bit careful here, he says, as he unequips his shield. Uh, probably not the best idea, but I kind of wanted to go full offense on these guys. Oh wow, there's, there's so many! Look at this! There's so many coming towards us right here. They must have chucked the rest of the garrison at us. That is kind of amusing. Considering they're running, I, I find their running animation kind of funny because they're running up a slight incline, I think. And it kind of slows them down enough to make their run a little bit funny. So, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Anyway, we're going to try and eliminate these Shadow Legion Centurions before they get to us. Because as you can see right there, Sara was eliminated so incredibly quickly because they are so good with their thrown weapons. We know how good they can be. Because in a previous series of Pendor, I was a member and indeed the Grand Master of the Shadow Legion. So that's uh, that's definitely something to take into account. Their thrown weapons are really deadly accurate. Alright, so there we go. Five renowned for that. And we're going to go into the keep here. I'm actually just going to go full on once again. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to go full on just yet because I'd like to... Oh, hello. Shot you in the elbow. Don't know why he would die fatally from an elbow shot, but <laughs> sure, why not? Oh, nice headshot. Great. Very good. I'm kind of surprised that I'm not hitting these guys. I mean, I, I guess it's just because I'm firing a little bit too early. Unleashing the arrow a little bit too too fast. I guess that might be the reason. Anyway, that is indeed it. Fantastic. Alright, so we can tell people just to take all the gear because I don't actually think I'm going to be finding anything. And I doubt they're going to find anything either. Yeah, only Sir Jocelyn is actually equipping anything from here now. Cracked plate armor he was wearing beforehand. And we do have a couple of things to take here. I have another 12 spaces, so I might want to take some Cobra Warriors, take some Snake Cult Armsmen, because I think they do actually level up into... Co yeah, they level up into Cobra Warriors. Unfortunately, Cobra Warriors don't level up into anything. I think it would be pretty cool if they upgraded into Anaconda Knights, but that's a bit too powerful, perhaps. Alright, so here is... The moment of truth. Do I request that says be awarded to us? And do I potentially defect from Salian? I know a lot of people wanted us to do that. But I'm going to ask again and we'll see what happens. Because we've kind of gone over it a little bit more in some uh, extra detail. So anyway, I'm going to request it and we'll see what happens. Anyway, I thank you very much for watching and for joining me. And I will see you next time.